Are you getting ready to take the Praxis Core Math exam? That is test code 5733. If that is a test that you need to take, good news. My name is Jeff Calariso. I'm a test prep expert with study.com, and I'm going to help you walk you through that test in this video. We're going to talk about all the things on the test so you are ready for test day. All right, let's jump in. Let's start with the basics. The test is 90 minutes long, about 56 questions on the test. So first math question, how long do you have per question? It's about a minute and a half. So you can do questions at about a minute and a half rate. You're going to be fine. You're going to get through all the questions. Next thing to know is you can take the Praxis Core math at the same time as the Praxis Core reading and the Praxis Core writing. That's a choice. You don't have to, but if you do, it'll save you some money. So a couple of things to think about right at the start. Your score will be out of 200 points. In most places, about 150 is a passing score. One more thing about your score. All that matters is passing. There's no bonus points for getting a, a higher score than someone else. So don't obsess over your score. Just focus on doing well enough so that you'll pass whatever the minimum requirement is where you live. It's also good to know that your test will have test questions. So these are questions that don't count towards your score. So even though there's only 56 questions on the test, there may be additional ones. They won't be first, they won't be last, they'll be somewhere you don't know. So don't worry about those, just treat every question like it counts. Other thing to remember with this Praxis Core Math exam, you don't need to bring a calculator. You will need to do math, that is part of the test, but they will provide you with an online calculator, so no need to bring a calculator. Next thing to think about is where you take the test. So you can take this test at home, or you can take it at a testing center. You can take it at home, generally speaking, if you live in the US, Canada, or a US territory, um, if you have all the necessary tech. So that means you have to have a camera, a mic. Uh, you can't do it on like a Chromebook or a iPad or something like that. So you need an actual like other kind of laptop or desktop computer. There's some general rules about the environment. If you're going to test at home, you need like a quiet space, clear like table or desk. So if that's of interest to you, know that you can do it at home or you can choose a testing center. On the ETS website, which is linked in the notes of this video, you can see where the closest testing center is to you. Hopefully there's one nearby. Uh, there, you don't need to bring a computer. They provide all that for you, all the tech, all the downloads right there for you. Um, sometimes though, you're gonna have to drive a little bit to find one. The availability of times at those testing centers is also a little bit less uh, open than if you test at home. So something to think about, we'll go more into that in another video. All right, let's talk about the types of questions that you'll see on the exam. There's a few different things, and so it's important to know what each question type is. First up, single answer, multiple choice. That's pretty straightforward. Um, these ones are usually a math problem or a scenario or a graph, and there's one correct answer. You just have to pick it. These ones, um, you'll know what they are because there is a little circle next to each answer choice. If you see a square next to each answer choice, that means that it is uh, a question where one or more answers may be correct. In some cases, there is still only one right answer, but in other cases, there'll be you know two or three correct answers, maybe more. They don't always tell you how many possible correct answers. That's part of the question. Last type is um, called a numeric entry question. It's basically a fill in the blank question. These will have answers that could be a, a number, an equation or an expression, also could be a fraction. So you just have to get used to answering um, all three types uh, as you go through some practice content. All right, let's talk about the content of the test. So what really are those questions gonna be about? Three main areas of the content. First one, number and quantity. Second one, data interpretation and representation, statistics and probability. And the third one, algebra and geometry. That sounds like more than three, I know. All right, let's break down what's in each one of those sections. All right, first up, number and quantity. This is basically covering all the math that you learn elementary school, middle school. So it's things like, um, what are integers, decimals, fractions, um, ratios and proportions, percents, uh, units and measurement. So like uh, the metric system, things like that. Um, it's gonna be helpful to review some of those concepts. So even though you learned it maybe in elementary or middle school, maybe you aren't uh, totally uh, refreshed on all those terms and, and things like that. So it is helpful still to review these. This section, number and quantity, is gonna be about 20 questions on the test, or about 36%. Okay, the second section is data interpretation and representation, statistics, and probability. That is a mouthful. 
every time I say that. Uh, this is about 32% of the test or about 18 questions. So it's a little smaller than the number and quantity section, but still a fair number of questions. And this is a section that I think for many people is a little bit, can be a little bit scary. So let's talk about the, the kinds of things that you'll actually see. So um, we're not going to cover everything in depth in this video, but a few things that you'll see on this section will things like probability. So uh, most common probability question is something like rolling a die. Uh, what are the odds of rolling a three? So that's going to be, you know, uh, a fraction. It's going to be a, a one out of six. So that's a very basic probability question. You'll also have to deal with things like mean, median, and mode. So if that rings a bell, but you're not quite sure what that means, uh, a couple of tips there. Mean, it's just the average. So uh, when you're asked to calculate the mean of a set of numbers, it's just the average uh, number from that set. Um, median is the number in the middle. Uh, I just like to think of like uh, when you're driving on a road and there's a median in the road, that's the thing in the middle. Median just means put the numbers in order, pick the one in the middle. If there's five numbers in order, it's the third number. Mode is simply the number that occurs most often. So uh, another way of thinking about this is like uh, um, a la mode means uh, in fashion. Um, so the number that is most in fashion is the number that happens most often. So those are some of the things that you'll see in this, uh, in these, from these types of questions on the Praxis Core Math. Third type of question on the Praxis Core Math is algebra and geometry. So you might remember from high school taking, maybe you took multiple years of algebra and a year of geometry. All of that is condensed into 18 questions on this test, or about 32%. So first up, algebra. Algebra is solve for x at its core. Um, sometimes you're going to be asked to simply, you know, you're going to be given an equation and solve for x, literally. Sometimes you're going to be given just an expression. So an expression is just, uh, it's the equation minus the equal sign. So it might be like 3x plus 2y plus uh, 5xy. Um, so something like that, and you're asked to manipulate the numbers somehow. So that's something you'll see on the algebra section. You'll also see some word problems. Word problems are going to be throughout the whole test. So get used to word problems. Geometry. Uh, is going to cover all of geometry. So all of the shapes you know and love, triangles, circles, squares, uh, properties of those. So think about things like the angles uh, within triangles. Uh, think about things like the um, relationship between different angles. So if there are two parallel lines and a transversal line, uh, what are the corresponding angles, the alternate interior angles, things like that. You'll also see problems about like area of a circle, um, circumference of a circle, uh, you know, relative terms uh, are round circles like tangents and chords, um, things like that. Other types of quadrilaterals, so not just squares, parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses. One thing to keep in mind for geometry, you do not have to memorize all the formulas, like the area of a circle uh, formula. They'll give you that. So you will be given a formula sheet with the most important formulas for the geometry section. So that will help you out. All right, now let's talk about preparing for this test. The first and most important thing to do when preparing for this test is to understand what's on the test. So that's what we just covered. So you're good there. Next thing you want to do is get a lot deeper in some of these content areas. So I just gave you a really like high level overview of what's on the test. You want to go more in depth with that. Once you're more familiar with all of those concepts and terms, all of that, practice is next. Practice is huge. You're going you're gonna to want to do practice problems, practice tests. Every practice question you do is going to help you be a little bit more prepared for test day. Every practice question you do might be a question that you see on the test or the same type of question. So the more comfortable you are there, the better that test is going to go. Um, when you see that question on the test, you think, oh yeah, I did something like this. I just did one like this. That's going to go great for you. So you can prep in a number of different ways. I'm going to recommend study.com's Praxis Core Math test prep course covers really all the things I just covered. Um, it's all learning science backed test prep resources. Um, it's going to cover practice. It's going to cover instruction. There's strategy. Um, so you can check out more videos in this series for more, or you can go over to say.com. If you don't have an account already, you can sign up. Um, also, if you, this video was helpful for you, please like, and subscribe to our channel. And hopefully pretty soon you'll have passed the Praxis Core Math exam. Good luck.